Hi class, welcome to Understanding the Quiz Project video. This lecture will help you understand how to do the quiz project. First of all, everything that we're going to talk about is located on the course site. If you click on the Major Assignments folder, you'll get to the instructions for all the major assignments. Going into the Major Assignments folder, you'll see a list of all the major assignments. Today we'll be looking at the instructions and the grading scale for the quiz project. If you open that folder up, you'll see a number of resources. The instructions and the grading rubric, the uh, video that you're watching, the website calculator to do some readability analyses that we'll talk about, and the link to submit your project. Let's get started by reviewing the instructions. First of all, the purpose of this assignment is for you to create a quiz. This will be a quiz that you can give to students. You're not going to actually give that quiz to students, but you could. Your quiz should be at second grade or higher. It should not be below second grade because it's developmentally inappropriate to give young children quizzes. You sh your quiz should be completely made up on your own. In other words, you shouldn't find any quiz items on the internet. I would rather see you develop poorly developed items and improve them than see you take items or questions from the internet and use them as your own. This assignment will be put through SafeAssign, and I do check carefully. So if I find that you've copied uh, or paraphrased questions from the internet, um, I will be asking you to redo the assignment. The purpose is to be able to recognize and develop good quiz questions and align them with the standard and learning target that we're going to be doing. So what should you do? Well, first of all, you need to decide what grade level your quiz should be at, and it should be in your area of certification. Then, just like we've been doing for the discussions, you're going to pick a standard that you want to focus on. You always start with a standard. And then you develop a learning target, not a learning objective, but a learning target that aligns with that standard. You'll recall that a learning target and a learning objective are very similar. They start with students will be able to, but then the learning target has a learning target or a target that students must come up to for success. So to refresh your memory, a learning objective might read, students will be able to identify the colors of the rainbow. A learning I'm sorry, a learning objective might read, students will be able to identify colors of the rainbow. A learning target will add to that with 80% accuracy or 70% accuracy. And what that means is, suppose you give a quiz with 10 items on it that are aligned with students being able to identify the colors of the rainbow. If your learning target is 80% accuracy, students would have to get 8 out of 10 questions right for you to consider that they've mastered the standard. So you're going to include a standard and a learning target that your quiz items will be aligned with. Now you may use the same standard that you've been using in the discussion, or you may want to go with a completely different standard. Once you have your standard and your learning target, and obviously your grade level, you're going to develop 10 multiple choice items, three binary items, which could be true, false, fact, opinion, or anything with two answers, one matching item with four or more premises. This means your matching item should have at least four things in the left column. A constructive response, either short answer or essay. Now those tip sheets that I've been giving you you should be able to use. Use those because if you don't follow the tips, you'll be asked to revise. So for example, when you're developing your multiple choice items, make sure that your responses to multiple choice are all alphabetized, which is a tip in the tip sheet. 
You should remember to include an answer key. You can either do this by highlighting the answer or just providing a separate answer key. And then you're going to run your Flesh Kincaid reading level and readability analysis, which we learned how to do a couple of weeks ago. You're going to report those. When you run this analysis, only run it on the quiz itself, not on your paper. So pretend you're a student and copy and paste out the quiz itself, anything a student would see, the directions, the items, and then run the analysis on that only. Your reading level should not be more than a grade level higher than your uh, standard. So for example, if you have a sixth grade standard, you should have a reading level no more than seventh grade. You can have a lower grade level, that's fine, but it shouldn't go higher because students won't be able to understand it. You're going to provide your, your quiz, your answer key, and you're going to write an addition, and your standard, obviously, everything we talked about, and you're going to write a paragraph or two of your rationale. Now this is, why did you select certain items to be in certain format? Why did you choose the information that you did to assess in a multiple choice format? Why did you choose the information you did to assess in a true-false format? And why did you choose the information you did to assess in a matching format? Use your textbook. There are some really good justifications about when you use each type of format and use citations. If you don't justify your choices from the textbook, you'll lose points. Finally, you're going to write a meaningful reflection, just like you've done previously, for things that you've learned. What did you learn from this assignment about quizzes that you can take into your classroom? What surprised you? What challenged you? What did you like? What didn't you like? Now I'll say a word about format. Some students struggle with this assignment because they, they get their format to look right, you know, everything will be lined up appropriately. And then they discover if they submit it in Word that the format has changed when I see it. And I, I'll give you a lower grade for format. The way around that is to submit two files. One, a Word file, like you always do. But the second is to change your Word into a PDF. And I can accept that for this assignment if you also submit a Word file, because if I have questions about the format, I'll look at the PDF. The PDF preserves the format that you see, so I'll see the same format when you submit it. So if you're concerned about formatting, submit both a Word and a PDF file. So what are some strategies for success for this assignment? Well, first of all, start with the standard that you're interested in. Write the learning target from that. And remember, you don't have to cover the entire standard with your learning target. Most standards take many lessons to develop, so you can carve off a little piece of it. Um, and they must all be aligned. And then use the best practices, tip sheets, the constructive response and selective response, to help you develop your items from scratch. You might want to take your test or even have some peers take the test. So if you have access to a fourth grader and your test is for fourth grade, have them take it and say and watch them and ask them if they struggle with anything. Don't wait until the last minute. Creating a strong test takes time, concentration, and practice. Here's the grading scale for the project. Uh, you're going to be graded on whether you included the appropriate items with their solutions, whether you included a standard and a learning target, not a learning objective. You'll be judged on the quality of your items, whether they're uh, written well using plausible distractors, and whether they were aligned, whether your reading level was reported, and whether it was uh, an appropriate reading level. You'll also be graded on your overall test layout and construction. Uh, so do things line up? Is it visually appealing? 
is an appropriate font size for students. So the younger students need a larger font, for example. Uh, in your matching, that should be done in a table. It shouldn't be done loosely because when you change things, you'll have to move things around and they won't line up anymore. So um, if you haven't used word tables for this, I'll probably be reviewing your work and, and providing a format. Uh, but try to try to do it in a word table so that your items will line up and if you have to change something they'll still line up your rationale and your reflection what you learned so that's it if there are any questions please email me at nhobrunner at mercy.edu thanks everybody